Good day, everyone, and welcome to the introduction to IELTS, or also known as IELTS. So, if you are someone who is preparing for an IELTS exam, whether it is academic module or general training, I want you to keep on watching this video as we are going to introduce you to the IELTS test format. So this video is brought to you by the English test prep providers. In our session, we are going to tackle IELTS as a language test. The different modules in the IELTS and its purpose, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the IELTS test formats the test registration in the Philippines, and the test fees. Now, before we dive into each topic, I'm going to introduce who we are. So we are language instructors from the English test prep providers. So ETTP is an online review center for high stakes English proficiency tests, such as IELTS, TOEFL, PTE Academic, OET, SOPIP, and KALE test. We are trainers and coaches who are experts, Filipino language teachers and educators who are committed to provide professional guidance to all nationalities in order for them to obtain their target scores in their respective examinations. So we train our students not only for their English test, but also maximizing their learning for future use. We ensure that our method of teaching is in line with the ESL teacher standards that enable our lesson retainable and applicable for both passing any English test and its utility in the real life context. So let's get started with the first topic, IELTS as a language test. What is IELTS or also known as IELTS? I know some of you are familiar with the acronym IELTS, but you don't know what IELTS stands for. IELTS stands for the International English Language Test Testing System. So there are a lot of test, um, tests or English proficiency tests across the globe, such as TOEFL, PTE, Academic, OET, and the likes. And IELTS is one of the institutionalized language proficiency tests. It is developed by the University of Cambridge ESL, or Examination for Speakers of Other Languages. It is one of the high-stakes tests that is developed to provide a fair, accurate, and reliable English language proficiency as well. Now, what about the language? The language skills that IELTS measure. Now, IELTS as a task-based examination, it measures the candidate's proficiency in the four macro skills. They are listening, speaking, writing, and reading. These skills are graded individually according to the IELTS criteria. Now, we're going to have another video for the, the IELTS criteria, so pull your horses. Who administer IELTS? There are two recognized test administrators where you can take your IELTS exam. The first one is British Council, and the second is the IDP IELTS Australia. Now, the question is, which one is more accepted? The answer is both. Both tests administered by the Two test administrators, British Council and IDP IELTS Australia, are accepted whether you will take your IELTS via British Council or IDP IELTS Australia. They are both accepted. Let's move on to the modules in the IELTS and the purpose. Now, the first module is academic. If you are someone who is applying for higher education or professional registration such as NCLEX, we're in, you are applying in an English speaking environment, you're going to take academic module. 
It reflects some of the features of academic language and assesses whether or you are ready to begin studying or training. The second module is the general training. General training test is for those individuals who are going to English speaking countries for work experience or training programs. It is also a requirement for immigration to Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and to the United Kingdom. This test focuses on basic survival skills and broad social and workplace context. In a nutshell, the difference between the two modules is that academic uses or measures your English in the academic purpose, while general training measures your English in the workplace. So make sure that you know what module are you going to take. The test format. Now, let's move on to the format of the listening test. Both academic and general training module will come across with the same listening test format. IELTS candidates will be given 40 minutes to finish the listening exam. There are four parts divided into different task types and an overall number of items of 40. 40 minutes is divided into two. 30 minutes to listen to the audio prompt and 10 minutes to transfer your answers on your answer sheet. So this format is via paper-based test. So we are going to make another video for the computer-delivered test. For the reading IELTS subtest, both academic and general training module have 60 minutes. Reading for both of these modules have 40 items but they are different when it comes to the passages and the sections. For academic module, there are three reading passages, approximately 900 to 1,500 words per passage. General training, by contrast, there are five sections. Reading passages are from business correspondence, advertisements, and related to English in the workplace. Let's move on to the writing subtest. They have different writing subtests when it comes to task one. However, there's 60 minutes time allotment for both academic and general training module, and they have two tasks as well. Let's move on to academic module first. Now, for the academic module, task one is data description. So it means task takers of academic module, you are going to inter interpret graphs, tables, and charts. And you have 20 minutes to do that. While for the general training, you will be given 20 minutes for you to finish a letter. So this is a business correspondence. Make sure you know whom you're writing to and make sure you have a good tone. Both academic and general training will come across with essay and you will be given 40 minutes to finish your task too. Last is the speaking exam. The speaking exam in the IELTS is a face-to-face -face conversation with an examiner. But the speaking exam has two examiners. The first examiner is your examiner during the exam, and the second examiner is the examiner who will listen to the recording of your exam. Remember, your exam is recorded. So they will record your examination for marking purposes. The speaking subtest or speaking exam has an approximately 11 to 15 minutes. And the, the speaking exam is divided into three parts. Part one is the introduction and interview. 
it will last for three to four minutes. So the questions are based on the test taker's personal information and general interests, such as you will be asked about your home, hobbies, or topics in relation to the social context. For part two, it is the individual long term. Approximately, it's four minutes. One minute for you to prepare and two minutes for you to talk. This individual long term, the IELTS candidate, will be given a cue card, a pen, and a paper for you to utilize during the exam. And you're going to have a two-minute speech. For part three, it runs 45 minutes, and this is a two-way discussion. Part three questions are related to part two, but in a more abstract manner. So you, the questions are a bit in in-depth manner. So make sure that you have established a good rapport with the examiner. Now let's move on to the IELTS registration process in the Philippines. Now, if you are watching this video and you're living in a different country, so make sure you visit the, your respective branches of British Council and IDP IELTS Australia for you to know the registration process and the test fees. Now, you have to register for the test before you can be placed on the list for a particular test date. So you will be asked to fill up quickly and it is recommended that you register as soon as possible. Another thing, you have to be aware that registration for a particular test date is based on payment for the test fee on a first-come, first-served basis. So as much as possible, the deadline for the submission of application is set three weeks prior to a certain test date. Three weeks. So it means you cannot book your exam a day before. All right? So I want you to follow these steps before you begin. First, you know what IELTS test you will take. Remember, there are two IELTS modules, academic or general training. Also remember, how will you take your IELTS test? Paper-based or computer-delivered IELTS. Number two, choose your preferred test date and test location and prepare for your test requirements. So you can choose your preferred date. It depends upon the available time slot, your test location, of course, the nearest test location in your country or in your location. And of course, you have to prepare the documents and the identification that you have to comply before your test. If you want to know more about the test requirements, you can visit this website from the IDP. Moving forward, let's move on to test format and the test fees. So this is the test format and the test fee for the IDP IELTS Australia. So make sure that you should know what test format are you going to choose and the respective test fee. So you can take a snapshot of this, um, this part. For the British Council, Again, make sure that you have to visit your respective um, countries, branches of British Council and IDP IELTS Australia. Next, you need to keep in mind that only the following valid government-issued IDs are accepted. So this is for the Philippines. You have to prepare for your passport as much as possible. It is valid at least six months before your test date. Or or else you cannot use your passport as a proof of your identification. You can also present your professional Reg regulation commission or PRC ID. So if you're a nurse, an engineer, a teacher, you can use your PRC ID as a proof of identification. Third, you can also use your SSS ID or social security system ID, GSS, GSIS ID or the government service insurance system ID or your UMID ID or unified multipurpose ID. So make sure that you have these um, valid IDs, two or three valid IDs 
for your supporting uh, identification or supporting proof of identification. Third, you have to register through this website, www.ielsregistration.com. So you have to, to choose the module that you're going to take, the test date, test location, and you will be asked to create a new user account. Make sure that you're going to use an active email address when you fill out the candidate's detail. And you have to keep in mind as well that you have to provide genuine information, okay? Lastly, you will be asked to upload a scanned copy of any accepted valid ID. So make sure that you have to finish your registration procedure in 30 minutes. Third, how would you proceed for your payment? So after accomplishing the third step, you're going to proceed to your payment page. So you can pay via Metrobank bills payment or offline payment or over-the-counter payment at IDP or your nearest IDP branch by, by cash, by card, or by manager's check. Third, you can also pay via PayPal, okay? So make sure that you have to, to pay depends on the test format of the IELTS that you're going to take. The fifth step, you will, reserve, you will receive a payment confirmation through your email. So make sure you have to, to check your email and refresh your email as you will receive a confirmation of your payment. And you have to keep in mind that British Council and IDP IELTS Australia used to communicate and post announcements through your email. So make sure you have to be active, most especially a week or two weeks before your test date. As they will give you uh, the venue, your schedule, and the address of your test center. Now, if you have questions, you can comment and you can send us a message. If you have inquiries about IELTS, if you want to learn more about IELTS, you can send us a message through our Facebook page or through our website. So if you can use this link through our website or you can use search us at ETP, ET Prep Providers or you can email us at IELTSFreelanceTutors at gmail.com or send us a message through these numbers. If you want to learn more about IELTS academic and general training, so we offer online review programs at the comfort of your home. So if you're interested, so please reach us through these um, means of communication. Okay? So again, if you have questions, you can comment us or send us a message. All right, thank you for watching. And thank you. Let's call it today.